Last time a United States aircraft carrier was sunk? It was the Battle of Midway, the USS Yorktown, June of 1942. We haven't lost an aircraft, actually, we did lose an aircraft carrier last year, not a fleet carrier, a smaller carrier, do you know why? Because it burned in San Diego Harbor and the Navy couldn't figure out how to put out the fire and they had to scrap the ship, the USS Bonham Richard, look it up. The Navy crashed four ships in 2017. Read the official reports from the Department of the Navy and the congressional investigations on those crashes. They're marvels of esoteric writing to try to dodge the cause of what happened while somehow revealing it between the lines if you can sit there with an electron microscope and read it carefully and keep yourself awake, right? If you're Taiwan and you're counting on the United States to defend you, what conclusion did you draw from Afghanistan this summer? Did you get the conclusion that here is a great power that knows what it's doing, that keeps its promises, and that can execute the things that it wants to do? Right? So getting back to the carrier point, I'll leave it at that. Forget that hypersonic missile. If you ask somebody who, 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 who watches the Navy and follows the Navy, all this based on open source material, I hasten to add, they will say, plausibly, if not certainly, the Chinese have had an ability to sink a fleet carrier for the last decade at least. Right? A carrier goes out in a so-called battle group, has a number of ships ringing in and some attack submarines. All of those things are meant to protect the central asset, which is the aircraft carrier, which these days costs anywhere from 12 to $14 billion. And with the wing, that is the, the planes and the people, the extra people on board, there's about 6,500 people on that aircraft carrier. So $14 billion and 6,500 people. Now, 2,800 people or so died on 9-11. And remember what a psychological shock and wound to the nation that was. Imagine 6,500 people in a military defeat over something that was foreseeable in advance and, and ask yourself how the nation would take it. I'm not trying to draw any conclusions about this, but I'm I just want to take you right back to what Peter Thiel said. Right now, there seems to be a massive amount of groupthink. We're only allowed to think about this one way. Nobody is allowed to bring up any of the counterfactuals. When policy is made on that basis, horrible blunders and catastrophes result.